Thank you for those who are coming back. Thank you to those who are new to the party. You are tuned in to another episode of Cake and Conversations. I am Sierra Narita. Let's get into the episode. I'm writing the vision and making it pie. Don't think it's a game and some of it just might be hard to apply. I know it, I know it, but I don't care because I know deep in my brain. I'm just there for greatness and I would not get it if I keep on playing. So let me go get it. All right, let's get into this episode. So today I want to talk about healthy boundaries. Um, I believe that healthy boundaries are necessary for just our everyday life, everyday situations. Everything that we tend to do requires some type of boundary. Um, Every relationship we have, every um, situation we're in, it all requires some type of boundaries that we have. And everybody's boundaries are going to be different, but I think that the guidelines or the, the guidelines that I'm getting ready to give you, um, would help in any of those situations. So it's not specific to relationships. It could be situations. It could be really anything that applies to your life that might need to have some established boundaries. So what I want to talk about is um, ways to help you set healthy boundaries. And I have, um, I think six, I think it's six points that I want to touch on. Um, to kind of help you establish what those boundaries should be for you. And it's going to be different for everybody. So one of the first things in order to establish healthy boundaries is you need to determine what you want and what you are okay with. You know, you need to ask yourself, will this particular situation or request or whatever get get you to your goal? Is this going to be a situation that it causes you to not be able to meet your own goals and allow someone else to get closer to theirs? And you need to determine if you're okay with that. You know, sometimes we are okay with stepping back and allowing other people to get to where they need to be in spite of ourselves, but that cannot be the norm. You can't constantly allow yourself to be um, passed over when it comes to other people succeeding. You know, it's enough out here for everybody to win. God created us all to like, to, to be progressive in some kind of way. So you need to determine, you know, what is it that you want? And, you know, that's one of the first steps to establishing boundaries. If you don't know what you want, then there's no way to truly determine where you're going to allow other people or situations to take you. So, but if you know what you want, you know what you're willing to do, then it's easier not to get caught up in, you know, just fulfilling other people's needs. So the second thing. Um, to help you establish healthy boundaries is to take your feelings out of it. Take your feelings out of the process. You know, your feelings will get you in trouble every single time. Like you don't want to operate or should I say, you don't want to um, make decisions based off, purely off your feelings because feelings are fickle. Feelings are based off our past experiences and not necessarily factually based. So you don't want to base your boundaries or the things that you decide to do or not do on your feelings. Um, You know, we have different feelings about different people because of our relationships with them. And for instance, if you are talking to a friend and you find out that this friend is kind of going down on their luck and they need some assistance, they may not be asking. They just may be telling you what's going on where well, you're going to feel some kind of way about that. You're going to feel um, you potentially will feel a tugging that you which would lead you to want to help them in some way. If you can, if you can't, that's not really the issue at this point. 
but you'll want to because nobody wants to see their loved ones not doing okay. No one wants to see their loved ones struggle. So you, the, the feeling, it's human to have those feelings of, man, I want to help. However, you need to take your feelings out of it and look at the situation logically because although they may be struggling, why are they? You know, is it something that they are not being a good steward over their money or their decisions that's causing them to struggle? Um, and if that's the case, then you may really want to reconsider if you are willing to step in and save them in this particular situation. So another um, way to help set healthy boundaries is to say yes to you. Now, boundaries is not all about saying no, but it's a big part of it. But when you say yes to yourself, sometimes that means saying no to other people. Sometimes it means, you know, not allowing other people to um, come into your space and determine or dictate where you go and how you do things. So I, I, um, a while ago, I read a book by Shonda Rhimes. The book is called The Year of Yes. If you have not read it, definitely go pick it up. It is a really good read. Um, and one of the takeaways that I received from this particular book, and it, it was how she decided to say yes to herself even if that meant saying no to other people. So the year of yes, the the book pretty much is about her journey to saying yes, um, her journey to being in the moment, her journey to like accepting the things and not always being so focused on the goal. I know that was all, that was one of the things that I had struggled with in that in my past is always looking towards the goal, always having a goal to accomplish, but not necessarily living in the moment. So that was one of the things that I took away from her book as well. But the biggest thing is saying yes to me. So saying yes to me may mean that I'm saying no to other people, other situations. I'm saying no to allowing my time to be wasted. So one way to make sure you are setting healthy boundaries is to say yes to you. And if you, by doing that, you know, the people around you should respect that because you're not always going to be able to say yes to them because you have to say, you know, you have to be more in tune with the things that you need versus the things that they want, if that makes sense. Um, the next thing I would say as we journey towards healthy boundaries is what did God say? You know, we are so quick just to say yes to some people without even consulting God or even, you know, pausing to decide if the decision is a good idea in general. We just automatically say yes. And it may even seem like we've we've thought about it, but we've already made up our minds to say yes to whatever this person is requesting or whatever this person is asking. So um, a lot of times we hit, will get these requests. Okay, so I'll give you an example. So Money, for instance, money is a big thing. Uh, you know, it can be a big issue in friend circles. It can be a big issue in families and all of the relationships in between. You know, if you receive a request, let's say someone calls you really close relative or friend, you truly love this person. You don't want to see this person struggle. So they call you and they say, I need some money to make my rent. You know, I need to be able to pay my rent and you have it. You have the money and you are able to meet this need. I would say um, before automatically deciding to say yes, 
I would encourage you to pause, to pause, pray about it, and then make the decision. Because if you decide automatically to say yes, then you potentially could be um, stepping in a role that you should not be in. You know, a lot of times we tend to not want people to struggle but it may be a situation where God wants them to feel some pain at that point. You know, they, it may be a pain point that they need to to get through by reaching towards God um, to really to really learn whatever lesson they need to learn. And now you're stepping in and essentially becoming their source. And you don't want to put yourself in a position to be someone's source because then, you know, they're looking to you as if you are God and you definitely are not because you, you can't meet all their needs. Yes. You may be able to meet this financial request that they, they ask for, but because they are coming to you, they are not necessarily going to God. Now they may have went to God first and prayed about it. Well, if that's the case and God led them to you. And if you take a moment and pray about it and wait for some type of word, It will not hurt the situation. If God truly had them come to you for to fulfill to fill this request, then by you saying, let me pray about it, it will not be an issue. And you will get the same word from God. Like you will not be out there floundering and not knowing what direction to go in. He will give you the direction, but you need to consult him first. And at the very least, we need to be pausing. At the very least, we need to be stopping and deciding or or really thinking about what it is that's happening. Like, are we meeting a need because, you know, they were not good stewards over their current uh, money? Or are we asking to meet this need because, you know, they just truly fell on hard times and it's just a difficult moment for them and they are just, you know, not able to get their head above water. Either way, you need to consult God. But if it's a situation where they're not being a good steward over their finances, what's stopping them for coming to you the next time, the next month? Because rent is due every month. The mortgage is due every month. You know, gas, electric, water, all of those things are typically due every month. So what is stopping them for coming to you the next time, you know? And if your answer is no, let your answer be no. You know, no is, um, is a, is a, it's a full sentence. Your no does not have to be justified. Your no does not have to be explained. And if someone, if you end up telling people, telling someone no, because, because their request, their request was not something that you're comfortable with, then you definitely um, need to reevaluate that relationship. Because, you know, a lot of times people look to us to justify our no's or, you know, expect it not to be a period at the end of that and expect a comma and for you to continue to talk and tell them, explain to them why you told them no. But like I just said, you, that, it, it requires no explanation. You know, you don't have to justify anything to them. You just need to be okay with it. And, and that's it. Like you don't have to, um, keep talking just to appease people's feelings when you tell them no. Uh, another, another way to help you establish those healthy boundaries is to ask yourself, why you are wanting to say yes. You know, is it out of habit? Is it out of feeling obligated? Is it out of guilt? You know, all of these things are reasons that actually say no. Like if you are in a situation where you're feeling like, oh, I have to meet this need because dot, dot, dot. You know, you can fill in that blank for whatever it is that you may be feeling some type of way about. Like, oh, I have to give this person this so they don't be mad at me. Oh, I have to 
sleep with this man or this guy or this boy or whatever, this woman even, I have to sleep with this person so that I can keep them around. I have to say yes to this request that I'm uncomfortable with because I need to make sure that this person that I that that says that they love me is not upset with me because I now don't want to meet whatever need that they feel like they have. And it's causing me some type of, of, of internal strife, but I'm going to sit my own feelings aside and allow your feelings and your, your um, needs to be met. Like that is absolutely not a reason to do it. Anytime you are in a situation where you are doing something out of habit, out of guilt, or out of your feelings, feeling bad, then that is automatically a reason to stop, pause, potentially say no, definitely pray about it. Like you do not want to be in a position to where a request, somebody that's in your circle, whether it's relationship, a friendship, a family member, an acquaintance, a coworker, whoever it is, you don't want to be in a position where where one of these people are at, they they ask they they're asking something of you and then you're uncomfortable with it and you're doing it anyway. It creates resentment. It creates um, expectations that are probably going to go unmet. And it just opens up a bunch of issues that are unnecessary because all you had to do was say no. And the thing is, like I said before, if you if your no is causing the people in your circle to um to 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 not to no longer have a certain level of respect for you or to no longer treat you as if you are um a friend or a um a loved one, then you definitely need to say no, first of all. And you also need to reevaluate this relationship because you don't want to be in that position. Um, And then the last thing I'm going to say about creating and setting healthy boundaries is to practice. (laughs) Now, this may sound strange because when you think about practicing something, you don't think about practicing your no's. But literally, that's what you need to do. You need to practice what I like to call your personal pause statement. So whatever that is for you, if it is, you know, let me pray about it or I'll get back to you. If it's just no, whatever it is that is your personal pause statement, practice it. No, it's a lot of P words, but <laughs> but it's necessary. You definitely need to practice and practice it like you are practicing for a high school play and you are getting the starring role. You are in the mirror. You are saying it to people. You're bringing it up in random conversations. Do not feel bad about practicing your no, because the thing is the muscles that you build, they get stronger and they become easier to work with. You don't feel the pain. If you're doing, if you first start doing push-ups and you banging them out and you get a little, little, little change in your muscles to where now then, you know, the next day you're feeling pain and you know, you know, it's because those muscles haven't been worked, but if you keep at it, and you are hitting them push-ups every day, then eventually you won't feel that muscle pain anymore. Eventually they'll become second nature. Eventually you'll be able to bang them out a lot faster, a lot more efficiently. And it's the same thing with any other muscle. Saying no in a way is building that no muscle. So if you are not used to telling certain people no, start with start with them and start small. You know, it's it's easy it's it's easy to say no to the small requests like um this may sound silly but if somebody says hey can you run me to the store no i'm not gonna be able to do that or um let me think about it and then get back to them and say no (laughs) you know that's a small request as you know as compared to maybe somebody that same person coming to you and say hey can i borrow fifty dollars can i borrow a hundred dollars can i borrow two hundred dollars can i you know can you pay this thousand dollar light bill like those are huge requests 
So that thing, because, you know, this person is coming to you and, it, and actually those bigger requests are a lot easier to say no to as well, depending on your situation, just because it may be, no, I don't have it. But those, any, any size request, it doesn't matter what it is. If someone is asking you for anything and you are not comfortable with it, if that is run me to the store, or if that is, you know, help me rob a bank, <laughs> You can be uncomfortable with this and it's okay. You don't have to justify it. Again, your no does not have to be justified nor explained. It is a full sentence and it deserves, you deserve to be able to say it without any type of repercussions. You deserve to be able to say no and to set those boundaries because, you know, if you are struggling with boundaries in one area, you are more than likely struggling with them in another area. And you don't want those, um, the lack of boundaries to spill over into areas that eventually could cause you problems. You know, um, relationships are a big part of what need to have some type of boundaries on them. And, you know, I'll get into relationships and the stages of relationships in another episode, but definitely relationships are one of those things that need to have boundaries and those relationships can be romantic relationships familiar relationships or anything else but they definitely need to have boundaries and even with ourselves we need to learn how to establish boundaries with ourselves we get to these points where it's like oh i'm grown i can do what i want or oh i work so hard i should be able to buy whatever i want Yes, you may be able to technically afford it, but if purchasing this, you know, $800 pair of tennis shoes is going to prevent you from being able to, you know, pay your electric bill on time. And I'm going to say electric bill because that's typically a smaller bill. You may not necessarily be feeling any kind of way because it's smaller. It's like, oh, I get it next month. Well, no. You use the electricity already. I'm going to need you or you're getting ready to use the electricity. I don't know if it's before or after the bill come out, but you've already used it. Pay what you owe. You know, most, a lot of, not most, I'm not going to say most or even a lot. I'm going to say some, some people are willing to, you know, let those smaller things um, fall by the wayside because in their minds, the bigger things are taken care of. So it doesn't matter. Well, it does. It does matter because those small things snowball and eventually it's, it gets easier to, to, to not do things just like it gets easier to say no. When you build that muscle, it gets easier to skip out on doing things that you need to do because you're saying yes to the wrong things. You don't have those type of boundaries established to get you um, to make sure that you're in a position to where all of your your needs are being met. Make sure your needs are being met first, and then you can start working on the things that you want and the things that you that you desire. So hopefully, um, you these tips helped you. I didn't really want to focus in on telling you. Um, any any real specifics because boundaries for me may not necessarily be boundaries for you and I I don't want to put my restrictions out there and then you try to formulate your boundaries based off of me like that's not what I want I want you to look at yourself and determine what it is about you that needs to what what boundaries concerning you need to be established because again yours may be different from mine's you know our boundaries are going to be based off of what we're comfortable with what our moral standards are what our um, relationship with God is what our spiritual life looks like like all of those things are going to help shape what our boundaries are and so for me all of mine are, are based off of those things in my life. So I didn't want to do any specifics because I don't want you to pigeonhole yourself. I want you to make sure that you establish boundaries that are specific to you. Um, so you need to take a look at yourself and, and be able to do that. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Cake and Conversations today. Again, I am Sierra Narita. I truly appreciate you tuning in today. Have a great day.